If you're like me, then at one point in your life, you had a lava lamp in your bedroom. Well, I made one at home in five minutes and it's so easy, all you need are a few household ingredients to start. I added a fourth cup of water to my flask and then poured three fourths a cup of avocado oil in that flask, then added about 10 drops of food coloring. I let it sit for 10 minutes until the water and oil separated and the food coloring eventually seeped down into the water at the bottom of the flask. It started to bubble and the water eventually turned red. Water is denser than oil, so it'll settle at the bottom and the oil will sit on top of the water. It's pretty cool. Then I took an alkaline seltzer tab and added it into the flask and waited for the magic to happen. Alka-Seltzer tabs are just a little tablet that contains baking soda and citric acid and it reacts to carbon dioxide gas and fizz. People sometimes dissolve them in water and drink it to cure heartburn or indigestion, but anywho, I waited for about 30 minutes and I started to notice some red bubbles jump out from the water at the bottom and float up to the top of the flask and then those red bubbles would stay at the top for a bit and then bounce back down into the oil. But I noticed that the results of my experiment were not as good as I expected they would be and I was a little disappointed. I thought maybe I didn't add enough Alka-Seltzer tabs so I added a little bit more into the flask to see if there would be a more beautiful reaction but the same thing just happened and if you know me then you know that I had to find a way to make this work and have it look like the image I had in my head like a real lava lamp and of course I actually found an easier way to do this that gave me much better results and with ingredients that you'll definitely have in the pantry. Since Alka-Seltzer tabs are kind of random and you may not have them on hand. So in the final try, I found myself taking my sea monkey container since I used my flask already for the other experiment and I added two tablespoons of baking soda to the bottom of the habitat and tapped it on the floor to create an even layer of baking soda on the bottom. Then I covered the baking soda with avocado oil just to reach the top of the container, about a cup. You can add coconut oil here if you don't have avocado oil or basically any oil but just leave some room on top. Then I got a separate little measuring cup and added 30 milliliters of vinegar and about 20 droplets of food coloring. Needed to make sure we'd have enough color this time for the bubbles to form but I let the vinegar absorb all of the food coloring so the liquid turned completely red and then I slowly added the vinegar and the food coloring solution into my baking soda and oil sea monkey habitat and watched the magic happen. I waited for about five minutes and what ended up happening made me feel like a kid in a candy shop discovering fruit roll-ups and dunkaroos for the first time because these results were amazing. Your lava lamp will continue working for about an hour and if the bubbles start to slow down and you want to make more, there should still be baking soda at the bottom of the flask or glass jar so you can add more vinegar by the teaspoon and watch the magic happen again. If you want to make it last a really long time, you'll have to get technical. Instead of using baking soda in vinegar, Drill a small hole near the bottom, attach a plastic tube sealed with silicone or hot glue, connect the tube to an electric air pump battery on and off switch, and when activated, the air pump will push the food coloring to the top and let it flow back down, lasting for months until the battery runs out, unlike the vinegar method, which only lasts for about an hour, unless you add more vinegar. I didn't try that myself, but I did research it for you just in case you do want to try that out for yourself. Anywho, I don't know about you, but this got me very excited about basic chemistry and it was so satisfying to watch and as I watched my lava lamp bubbles bounce up and down for what seemed like hours I learned that lava lamps were invented in 1963 when a bartender in England was trying to create a decorative item for his bar and he was experimenting with a bubbling cocktail shaker and a homemade egg timer that used heated wax and once he saw how cool those bubbles looked he realized that he had to adapt this idea into what would eventually form into a lava lamp and once they were developed, they could be seen in households worldwide, ultimately becoming symbols of the counterculture movement, psychedelic art, and a relaxed creative break from rigid societal norms. In 1993, lava lamps were even sent to space aboard the space shuttle Columbia to study fluid dynamics and microgravity, where the wax actually behaved differently and it helped researchers understand how fluids behave in space. And all of this was so cool, but I was still wondering what actually goes into creating these iconic lava lamps. 
and I soon learned that a lava lamp has two main components, colored wax and a colored solution that the wax sits in. It all started with a glass bottle that was blown into the shape of a lamp and molten glass blobs and air were then dropped into the lamp and tested against heating and cooling methods to ensure the bottle would be able to withstand extreme heat without breaking. And once that was figured out, the liquid was added. They've never really revealed the exact formula of that liquid. All that's known today is that it's mostly about getting the density just right. As the lamp heats up, the wax's density changes, causing it to float in the liquid and when the wax reaches the top, it cools, sinks, and the process repeats simultaneously. The magic lies in perfecting the balance of density. And a bit of chemistry is all it takes to get this right. This bartender, actually known as Edward Craven Walker, tested ideas for months and named the first lamp as the Astro Lamp, which eventually adapted into what we know today as lava lamps. So, as complex as that is, it's exactly why I wanted to figure out a way to be able to make a lava lamp in minutes, and using a little bit of chemistry and household ingredients is all it took to make a lava lamp at home in minutes. So now, obviously, I'm wondering what it would be like to make my own snow globe. 